Good morning, everyone. My name is Josh Blaylock, and this is the Skype for Business recap. Uh, really quickly, for those of you that are new to the show, this is just kind of a weekly done on Friday deal. I try to keep it at 15 minutes, but I've been kind of going a little bit over lately, uh, where I just cover kind of what's new, what's going on in the Skype for Business and uh, Skype for Business online communities. Um, product news, updates, things like that, events. So, um, yeah, that we got uh, got some good stuff to talk about today. Uh, thank you all for joining me, and uh, please bear with me as I, as I work through some of these details here. Um, it's been a great week. There has been a lot going on in the community, uh, a lot of third party product updates and cool announcements going on, and uh, and, and event news happening as well. So, uh, yes, very exciting week. Um, First, Skype for Business user groups. We're kind of coming to a close of this quarter's uh, round of, of meetups for the Skype for Business user groups. Uh, I went to the Charlotte user group yesterday, and that was a good time. Uh, that's my, my third one I've been to now, second time at the Charlotte one. Um, we had the same topics as the uh, Nashville user group that I was at a few weeks back, and that would be Polycom was the... Uh, vendor on on site that was going over their products and their integration with Skype for Business and the cloud, and then we had a cloud PBX presentation as well. Um, normally, that's presented by two different people. In this case, Mr. Jeff Schertz, uh, an Office Services and uh, Office Servers and Services MVP, uh, who works for Polycom, he uh, he gave that presentation and then was nominated to uh, to give the second presentation. So. He did very good keeping up with both of those, fielding questions and uh, covering all the content. It was a good time of learning. It was great to be able to finally meet him as well, and I got to meet uh, Mr. Tom Lasciano there as well. Uh, we've we've uh, interacted several times on Twitter and etc. And always good to put faces to names and uh, people that you've kind of seen online but don't really quite know who they are in the real world. It's good to have a chance to meet them in person. So great to meet you guys. It was a pleasure being there and seeing everybody else. Looking forward to the next one. Really quick, I had been accused of possibly rigging the, um, the, the raffles at the end of the user groups because my first two, I won something both times. I walked away with a Voyager Focus UC the first time. Love that thing. And a Polycom VVX 600. Also love it. Um, great devices, but uh, yeah, I won twice in a row. You know, good luck, I guess. But... Uh, yeah, so I've been accused of rigging it. Well, I won nothing yesterday. So, you know, let it be known. I, I did. I'm not. There's no rigging happening. And the, the the theory has been blown out of the water, and that's that's that. That's settled. All right. So, um, at any rate, moving on. That was a good time. Other event news. Ignite still a long ways off. That's going to be September 26th through the 30th in Atlanta. Microsoft Ignite. Um, early registration is still ongoing for that, I believe, till the 22nd-ish, somewhere in there. Um, so for those of you that got those emails uh, with, with the codes and everything, you can save a few hundred bucks on your registration, get your hotel booked, make sure you got a place to stay when it's time for the event. Um, and I am thrilled to announce that I will be going to Ignite this year. So I, I have not been to any real major uh, Microsoft or associated conferences uh, before, and this will be... Uh, kind of my first rodeo, so to speak. <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm very excited about that. It's going to be a good time. A couple other people from, from Deloitte will be going as well, possibly. And uh, and so it'll, it'll be great to, to hit up all the different sessions there, meet some people that I haven't had a chance to meet yet and, and take part in that. So uh, if you're going to Ignite, give me a shout and uh, it'll be it'll be great to see you guys there and, and meet up for a few minutes or so. So um, next up... A week or so ago, Jamie Stark had shared a photo, uh, kind of a teaser photo of the um, the Skype for Business Voice Solutions poster that he that was they were working on. It was not finalized, but now it's finalized, and he gave us the link to that. So uh, there was kind of a race to see who was going to get it printed out on actual poster paper and put up on their office first. And uh, the first claim to fame I saw there was from Mr. Jason Wynn. Uh, and he's a pretty active uh, member in the uh, Twitter Skype for Business community. And uh, Jason, who, his Twitter handle is at jwynn, W-Y-N-N, shared a photo of the poster printed out and put up. Kudos to you, Jason. That was awesome. However, 
where I have to give you a ding is that I'm a pretty hardcore, diehard Microsoft fan. And I know it's kind of contrary to, you know, Satya's whole open source, we're friends with Apple thing that he's doing. But I still kind of have a little bit of this Microsoft versus Apple thing going on when it comes to the devices. I'm, I'm a Microsoft fanboy, admittedly, all right? And I noticed this monstrosity of a Mac device right underneath of your Skype for Business voice solution poster. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm just playing. You know, there are a lot of people that are excellent Microsoft uh, professionals that love their Mac devices. And, you know, there's just a big crowd of y'all out there and you, you, you do your jobs well and work on the devices you're working with. So can't fault you. It wouldn't be my choice, but, uh, you know, to each his own. So <laughs> good job on the poster, Jason. Um, first up, Cloud Connector Edition. If you have not heard of this, this has kind of been an area that is, is, is ongoing, evolving. It's still, the documentation is in preview. The bits aren't really even out there to fully play with yet. It's been a few select customers that they've rolled out very early preview bits to. And it's an area where I know a lot of people have been very fuzzy and gray on. They don't really know what's going on there. Well, let me talk about the use case for this first. This is for people who do not have an on-premise Skype for Business deployment. They have a Skype for Business online deployment. Office 365, that all of their users are there. They want to take advantage of the new Cloud PBX features. Uh, however, they already have a voice infrastructure. They've got a PBX on-prem with their gateways all set up and a good deal with their ISP, that their, uh, their, their telecom provider. So they've got, they want to use that for their voice, but they're in the cloud and they for their user base and they don't have any on-prem infrastructure. So there's no hybrid yet. That is where Cloud Connector Edition comes in. It is a dialed down version of an on-prem deployment. Uh, it is a packaged set of VMs that you download, you will download and deploy them on a, on a server, on a Hyper-V instance. Um, and th there's a number of requirements for the server, obviously, and I'm not gonna go into all those now. Uh, but you can deploy that, th this, this set of VMs there and they kind of serve as a bridge between those users and your on-prem voice infrastructure. Very cool concept. Um, I, I've heard of you know a few stories where there's been some pain points in the very early testing, but again, that's what beta and preview and all that's for. So they're still working all those out. Jamie Stark, a program manager for Skype for Business at Microsoft, he shared a, a TechNet article um, that was planning for Cloud Connector Edition. And there's again, the preview disclaimers splashed all over that. Jamie shared that this week. It had been retweeted a number of times. So I dug in there and wanted to get a little more clarity on what's going on with this. Essentially, in these four packaged VMs, we've got your edge component, your mediation server component. Rather than a front end server, we have a central management store role. And then you've got your domain controller. Uh, the domain controller serves for ADDS, uh, directory services and certificate services. So you've got both of those uh, happening with Active Directory. This Active Directory is kind of a self-contained piece for these servers. It's not integrated or connected to your on-prem Active Directory, so there's no need to worry there. Um, now, architecture for how this all looks. You, you take these package set of VMs, you're gonna end up putting them on this host. You go through a configuration wizard to get them all set up and connected to your environment, etc. cetera. Um, you obviously need to have your voice infrastructure in place and a working Office 365 tenant, and you're gonna have to provide you know a number of uh, pieces of information uh, as you're setting this up um, but what you have what you're doing here is per PSTN site and let's say one PSTN site is Atlanta they've got their own gateway and their own uh, connection to the to the MPLS from there and they've got another connection to the MPLS um, MPLS connection in Dallas you know just different PSTN sites so for each of these you would have your own cloud connector instance installed at each site, okay? Um, and, and they would sit behind your voice infrastructure. You can have up to four cloud connector instances per site. As a matter of fact, if you only have one, that's one of those instances where they say, well, this is really just demo and, and lab. This is not production. That's Microsoft's stance. So they want you to have multiple ones for HA. Um, the recommended is that you, you know, if, if you need up to three of them, then you have a fourth on standby as your HA instance. 
Each of these instances can handle up to 500 calls. So if you're hitting 1300 concurrent calls during the peak of your day, you're gonna want three different instances in play active to handle your call load. And then that fourth will be your, your HA instance. Um, and that would make sure that that PSTN site that has 1300 calls in it, you know, at one time during the day, these connectors can handle that. Uh, that is how it was set up. That's, that's the name of the game there. Um, how the actual flow of media, excuse me, and signaling works is you're signaling a user sitting at that site will go up to uh, the cloud. The cloud will say, awesome, this is where you do all your IM and all of your other stuff. But for voice, you're actually gonna talk directly to this cloud connector instance. So that client sitting in your location is not gonna send audio and media up through the cloud and back down. That audio and media will go straight from the client over to your cloud connector instance and out the PSCN gateway. Awesome, beautiful setup. That is the use case here. That is a little bit more clarity and that is a little bit more understanding of what is in, what those four package VMs are. So I hope that helps some of you guys that were a little bit confused or just fuzzy as to the details like I was. Uh, if you've got more clarification or maybe questions, feel free to send either of those to me and I'd be happy to help track down the answers to them or, or just hear your feedback on more information that you've got. So there we go, Cloud Connector Edition on the horizon. There's a little bit more info for you. Uh, last thing I want to touch on, Call Recording Pro. Uh, this is a, a, a product put out by uh, Landis Computers, Matt Landis, a Office Servers and Services MVP, a uh, very well-known and active community member. Uh, he did a presentation this week uh, going over the newer features of his Call Recording Pro utility, uh, which he said in his video comes with Attended Pro if you've got that. So, th you know, that's pretty cool. But Call Recording Pro, you install it locally. You need to already have Skype for Business or Link clients set up. Um, and then you, you install this Call Recording Pro client locally. It can be managed centrally if you're gonna deploy it to a number of clients. There is a central server management component that you can use. So, so that's cool if you don't want your individual users to decide what they're gonna record and not record. Um, you can choose to either record all calls or you can choose to record certain ones depending on you know what settings you choose. Then you choose where they're stored. You can pick a location locally or with the newer versions, the um, your recordings can now be stored in OneDrive. So you can pick OneDrive as a location and, and throw them out there. Um, Call Recording Pro is accessible on your mobile app. So if you make a recording while on your desktop from your mobile app, you can go and access that recording. Uh, as it's stored out there in OneDrive and pull that in through your, your client and have access to the recording right there. That's pretty sweet. Uh, the other pretty sweet thing about this is that it's available for both on-prem Skype for Business and Skype for Business Online. It's in the cloud in Office 365. Um, and it records with all Skype for Business optimized USB headsets and handsets, which is awesome. Something I'm a little bit unsure about because I didn't see any specific wording. I don't think this would matter, but is USB included in that? If it's a device, if it's a headset that I can plug in with a USB, but I can also use Bluetooth, does that work? You know, if it's Skype for Business Optimized? That's I, probably a silly question, but I, I, I'm just curious because I, I love my USB headset. So anyway, um, but yeah, awesome looking product at this point. Um, any other information I wanted to spill out there about it? Uh, no, no, I think that's that's about it. So, oh, uh, IP phones. So if you got an IP phone sitting on your desk, those are not supported for recording calls quite yet. So, you know, may maybe in future versions or something, but uh, the product as is now and the capabilities for recording your calls and managing that infrastructure and, and all the headsets that are available to you for recording, pretty awesome. Very well done, Matt and team. Uh, very cool product. I will include a link to uh, detail to the product itself and then to the uh, the little YouTube video I watched for that. I am pushing my time again. I don't want to go over by much at all today. Thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate it. It's been a busy, crazy week, and I think it's time for us all to enjoy a, a fun weekend. Hope you guys have good weather like we're expected to get here, and uh, I hope I will see you all here again next Friday. Uh, again, enjoy your weekend. Have a productive next week, and uh, adios.